Hello and welcome to Hallelujah Monkeys for June 26. My name is Dylan Flynn. My name is Trevor Ickrath. It's good to be back, Trevor. It's good to be back in the saddle again. It is. We took a week off. I feel refreshed. I'm ready to turn in one of the best episodes we've done yet. You know, season three. This is the season three premiere. Yeah, what are some shows that had good... I feel like Breaking Bad started getting real good around season three. Yep. Um... I feel like a lot of those like um, workplace comedies really hit their stride in like season three. Like, oh, uh, that's a Parks great point. Rec, like Parks and the Rec, The Office. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe maybe Hallelujah Monkeys can join the ranks. Let's hopefully it doesn't end as badly as uh, season three of Game of Thrones did, though. Is that the one with the red wedding? I think we might be barreling forward towards a, a horrible, gruesome end. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about news? Yeah, let's talk about the uh, news stories we're going to get into this week. It's all good. So, Trevor, we took two weeks off, or we took a week off, so this is theoretically two weeks ver- worth of news, but I don't have that much to talk about. Like, there was a, a very short-lived ARG that was kind of fizzled out. I don't really have anything to say about that. Yeah, that was what happened. It turned out to be, like, um, a chance to get a job interview to work at Jaguar. It was just, yeah, it was just another, it was more corporate glad-handing. Yeah, the, Gorilla's the, corporate buddies just keep getting more and more nebulous, and I know a little less about what's going on with them every time they kind of pull this stuff out, it seems. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then, and then uh, you know, we've had a, a slow trickle of more images released from the strobe light show. I mean, there's just not that much to talk about. But It's been uh, mainly quiet on the Gorillas front. We have a couple of things to, to chat about for sure. Right, because we technically have a, a new Gorillas feature, right? Yeah, I, well, I, I don't know if, if the word Gorillas is used anywhere in any f- official capacity. That's yet? true, yeah. It's technically just uh, just our boy Damon Albarn out there. Right, so Vince Staples just put out his, uh, his I guess, second official LP. Right, but Big Fish Theory. Big Fish Theory, which, I, you know, the whole world's kind of going crazy about right now. And it's... A, it's People love Vince Staples. He's... He's in the spotlight right now. You know what? I can't get into him though for some reason. I love him. I, I've been ever since Hell Can Wait. I've, I've loved Vince Staples. It makes me proud. I grew up in Long Beach, so it's good to hear uh, uh, a little bit of Long Beach back in the zeitgeist after after the Snoop Dogg was reigning king for so long. Has anyone tried to talk to you about J Cole? Yeah, J Cole. Sure. Like like J Cole's fans are like, you gotta listen to J Cole. His lyrics are so smart. He's so deep. He's like just, he's like the best rapper right now. That's how I feel when anybody tries to talk to me about uh, Vince Staples for some reason. And it seems like music journalists try to talk to me about Vince Staples a lot. Like, he's really getting the, the like you said, the zeitgeist push right now. I think Vince Staples, I don't know if I, if I misstand. I don't, I don't necessarily pour through the lyrics and take them as gospel. But uh, I think he has a very, in spite of his being a sort of conscious rapper, I think he has a very visceral style. That uh, can be very exciting at times. And there's some... L- listen, Big Fish Theory, best Vince Staples album by far. I'm sure I'll check it out at some point. It's terrific. It's, it's, what I love about it is it's, it's that sweet spot of between 35 and 40 minutes in length. We've had enough 60-minute-plus uh, rap albums this year to last a lifetime, God. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And, and the track that Damon features on, Love Can Be, which also has uh, Kilo Kish on it. And Ray J. Don't forget Ray J. Don't forget Ray J. Another honorary gorilla. <laughs> Just to throw in a Kanye West reference. Do you think uh, Damon and Ray J would have been friends if they didn't love the same bitch? I don't know. It's a good question. Is Vince, yeah. Staples there, is, are, is Vince Staples the reason they're Eskimo brothers? Is that what we're <laughs> claiming? <laughs> speaking, of, uh, speaking of Long Beach, though, and... Uh, Another thing, I've been a little too tied up in the uh, most recent Young Thug album to check out the uh, Big Fish Theory yet. But uh, The one that came you know, out. Uh, to, uh, uh, the, the, easy, the, breezy, the, beautiful Thugger Girls. Another uh, Gorillaz cohort, Snoop Dogg, shows up on that. Turns in one of the best verses I've heard in a long time from him. Just really kills it. He seems to be in a, you know, his new album's got some good stuff on it, too. He seems to yeah, be in, in a... Yeah, a little bit of a renaissance. Yeah, ha- having an uptick right now. But I will say that that track with Damon, there's not a whole lot of Damon on it. He's almost indiscernible. Fuck it. I'm just going to play that little Damon snippet, because it's not like we're going to get flagged. It's very short. So here's that. Yeah, go ahead. The 
production on that album is great. It's a good album. Go Vince Staples. Uh, you're an honorary gorilla. He's uh, he's opening for our show, right? I believe so. I believe That'll so. That'll be cool. I'll definitely have listened to Big Fish Theory by then, I can imagine. Yeah. It's not, it isn't homeworky. It's very fun. Cool. Speaking of Gorillas Live, though. Yeah, let's talk about, so the, we had another big telecom-sponsored live stream of a gorilla show, this one in Cologne. Right. And there was a really fun run-up to this one where they were kind of like doing some kind of a Murdoch is missing thing where like uh, they were sort of posting pictures in and around Cologne with with Murdoch sightings. That Murdoch always getting into trouble. Here's the here's the review of the full stream, okay? It was shot very nicely and it was definitely a step down from Demon Days. How couldn't it have been? Right. You know, how can you recapture that whole headlining a festival mood yeah. atmosphere? The the energy just it didn't compare. There's a very solid performance of uh, of Sex Murder Party in that Cologne show, which I recommend you go check out. Which you and I have agreed is the highlight of these Phase Four shows, right? That's the peak of the set. Sex Murder Party. Oh, for Party. sure. Also, also, uh, uh, what I enjoyed about this set list was so the the main show is mainly just humans, but. Uh, as usual, because Clementine wasn't in the building, they skipped uh, Hallelujah Money and slotted out of body in its place. I wonder if that's going to be the, the derriger of these these Phase 4 shows. I'd love to experience it live. I hope they play it at the forum. But let's talk about the encore, because there's definitely... Well, no, wait, one more thing, one more thing, is that uh, we, f- we finally have, I guess, a good soundboard quality of the live version of Carnival. Okay. And that has the whole extra Damon verse in it, which I guess Right, is... the 2D special. Yeah, and I did listen to it for the first time in that context, and I, I can't really wrap my head around it yet. I'm not sure that it works. It feels weird to me. I actually missed this, so I guess I'm going to be waiting till uh, the studio version finally drops with that super deluxe version. When do you think we're going to get that? Uh, so I think it's August 27th was the date that I heard on Jeez. that. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be interested to hear the studio version of that too, and see if maybe it makes a little bit more sense in that context. But uh, but let's talk about some some encore stuff because we've got yeah some... they played some other cool stuff. Okay, so big one is finally finally <laughs> we finally got it. We finally got the number three streamed Gorilla song on Spotify and other streaming services. We got on Melancholy Hill at last. And yet, and yet they couldn't just give it to us. So instead, no. he starts playing it, and then he goes. Come on, you guys sing it. <laughs> I hate, I hate that. I hate that. Son of like, a bitch. I hate that. Like, if I wanted to listen to myself sing it, I could just do that in my car, dude. Play on Melancholy Hill, you fucker. Everybody here wants to see it. Everybody here play the fucking wants song. to see it. Just play the fucking song. It's one of your biggest songs. Play the fucking song, dude. It's so dumb. Jesus. But you know what? You know what made up for it? What? The ultimate left turn curveball of of the encore set and maybe of the live gorillas experience <laughs> yeah this is i think one of the most unexpected things they've done it, probably in their career we got five four played for the first time since 2002 jesus with lead vocals by jenny beth of savages yep that was the thing that happened fucking crazy really weird and actually i gotta say Kind of badass. Kind of badass. It was cool, ass. yeah. I mean, yeah, if, if 5 4 is going to make a comeback in the Gorilla set, then I think this is a pretty cool way to do it. I feel like she probably sold the energy of that song better than a 2017 Damon Albarn could. Like, she kind of found her way into that punky stadium energy. You know what I mean? This, this sounds unfair, but as Damon ages, I'm less interested in seeing him turn in these kind of punky performances i think that's fair i think that's totally fair so this got me thinking trevor that i would love to see some more phase one deep cuts with humans collaborators taking the lead any ideas that like immediately come to mind okay so i i was thinking what do you do with caliuchas well the obvious pick would be latin simone because she's she's spanish speaking and that'd be pretty sick in spanish. yes i agree but you know what i think she'd do really well with is is new genius i think it has kind of that she's my collary spy movie vibe you know what i mean i get that yeah it does it does kind of have that uh mood to it I got two more for you. I'd love to hear Popcon do a version of Slow Country. I think that'd be sick. Oh, man. I, I would seriously just love a Popcon version of uh, Clint Eastwood. Like, oh, yeah. That would I know that's be like great. a super obvious idea, but that would be pretty sick. But yeah, Slow Country, that would rule. Finally, this is the, this is 
let's talk about your all-time long shots. But this is a here's two tastes that at least make sense in theory in my head. What about Benjamin Clementine doing Dracula? Oh man. Just try to imagine it. Try to per- <laughs> let it percolate in your brain. <laughs> Rest is good for the blood. <laughs> how about this? Okay, how about this? Any song from the self-titled, they play it completely straight. But Jamie Principal is in the background the entire time just hyping it up. <laughs> Thumbs up all the way. <laughs> no, Damon's doing those. Damon's doing those really soulful uh, gravity vocals, and he's in the back. I don't think they hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's 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 end uh, our news with a little bit of, of sort of unofficial but awesome gorillas related stuff. Yeah, because the gorillas fan community has been very busy in light of like you know a lack of official news. Yes, this is very cool, Trevor. There's a. On YouTube right now, there is a a fan animatic, so like a you know not fully animated, but like moving uh, storyboard for a "Let Me Out" video uh, mm-hmm. that is was made by a lady named Anya Butler, who goes by Mepity, and that has has nearly crossed two hundred and fifty thousand views on YouTube. I've seen it. It's very good. Very well yeah, done. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it like, totally fits the song. I, at one point, I was thinking, like, is this a little too melodramatic? But then I thought, you know what? This song is melodramatic as fuck. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> Animatics, though, I've seen those becoming, like, a larger and larger part of fan communities as, like, fan artists kind of try and bridge the gap between, like, a piece of, like, you know, like a, a traditional like piece of fan art, like a drawing, and something more complex like a video. You know, like, most people don't really have the tools at their disposal to make a full music video. But if you like, if you are able to put together something of like this quality, the fan community is just going to love it. For sure. I support any, anything that helps democratize or blur the line between what, what official parties and fan parties can make, you know? And then let's talk about something that's very near and very dear to my heart, Trevor. Okay. You and I have a mutual friend in the gorillas community who we go way back with. We do. I saw a blur with him here two years ago, and he slept on my floor. And and this man's name is Log S. That's his per- yeah. That's his performing alias, Log S. <laughs> Some of you listening probably are already aware of Gorillas versus Log S because it's really gained some traction over the years in the interim between uh, Plastic Beach and Humans. As they're as... great releases, they are great releases. There's what? There's Fear of a White Planet was the first one, right? No, the first one was Real Horror Show. Then no, Real Horror Show was the second one. I thought Real Horror Show was first, but okay, either way. The first two, anyway, are, are Fear of a White Planet and Real Horror Show, and then... The Future That Never Came, I the think? The Future That Never Came. Um, these are mashup albums, so they they sort of pit Gorillaz material, they create a sonic playground to recontextualize Gorillaz music. The new one has just dropped, and I'm very excited about it, because to me this has like, become a real tradition. When we get a new Gorillaz album, I'm kind of expecting that new Gorillaz vs. Logos album. And he's delivered every phase. For sure, and this new one, Apocalypse After Party, is like the fucking culmination of this project, in my opinion. It's really good. He did a really great job with this. Something I like about Logs mashup so much is that, uh, you know, if you look at mashup culture, there's a tendency to go for really obvious uh, references and stuff that everybody's going to recognize. But he really goes for some out there stuff to put in here. Like, um, I think the first release turned me on to like the um, Samurai Shampoo soundtrack. Oh, right, right. Yeah, which isn't one, it's not something you're going to get a cheer of recognition from if you definitely spin it not, in a, in a just, DJ he, set puts his stuff together and he makes it work this is definitely an evolution of of this whole concept because like this new one has a a, a gorillas like album concept which the concept of this album is that the humans party happened and then the world didn't end so uh they decided to have kind of a celebratory after party about still being alive which is fun and then if you if you download the album it even comes with like a digital booklet with some art like he's really pushed the whole thing forward to to you know increasingly elaborate and legitimate spaces in my opinion. The album cover he did put together for it is also better than the actual humans album cover. <laughs> Agreed. I want to turn opinion. you guys on to some of those. Uh, I want to play a clip, Trevor. All right, what are you going to play? There's a song on this album called "Factories Far Away." Right. This was this one definitely stands out. Yeah. 
This is probably my second favorite after the um, 911 uh, Kendrick mashup. That oh, was yeah, really that cool. one's amazing, too. 912, I believe that song is called. Yeah, 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 yeah. From the title, you probably know that the, what song Factories Far Away is, is sort of playing with. And you probably also know that I don't count myself in sort of the Rhinestone Eyes fan club. Because you're a bad Gorillaz fan. And yet, Trevor... I can't. I have no defense against this fucking jam. It's really good. He turned it into kind of like almost like a trip hop jam. He turned it into a carnal, animalistic club booty shaker, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spin a little bit of this song for you so you can hear what I'm talking about. So here's some of Factory's Far Away. And nobody knows what to do with the heat on the sunshine. I don't wear me while rain is falling. My glass comes from the sky. good really Hot good jam definitely some of vlog's best work yeah you can hear a little bit of uh, uh, original light guitar in that clip of uh, that's another thing i like that he does he actually does add his own arrangements because he is a, he's a pretty accomplished musician and he has his own band right is that yeah. called uh, organization? Organization. organization organization i would totally recommend that you listen to this whole album it's, it's a nice uh, unindulgently short album you can just youtube apocalypse after party uh, or you can go to gorillas versus log ass all one word dot webs dot com for the download, which again has like a digital booklet and some digital liner notes and things. And I believe it has a bonus track. I can't quite remember how that works as well. Yeah, if you're a gorillas fan, there's no way you're not going to enjoy this, at least a little bit. Yeah, I think in between sort of the humans release and then the super deluxe vinyl in, in a couple of months, this is like a perfect kind of. This will tide you over. Exactly, exactly. And I've been I've been spinning in it quite a bit. There's a, there's a lot of gold on this thing. I really love that uh, Let Me Out remix he did, too. I won't, that has my favorite uh, <laughs> moment on the album that I'm not going to spoil for anybody. I don't want to spoil it's it. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. That's so out of left field and so perfect in that song. Yeah, for sure. Go check out Apocalypse After Party. It's dope. Do you want to uh, talk about some actual Gorillaz material, though, and get into the roundtable? Okay, let's do it. Madam! The ship is under attack from pirates. I've been sent to escort you to the lifeboats. Madam? Oh. Um, I... Oh, dear. So, Trevor, we're kicking off uh, Season 3 with an in-depth look at the, the canonical Gorillaz music videos today. Yes, relationship with Damon Albarn ended. Jamie Hewlett is my new best friend. Yes, it's, we're moving on to a Jamie phase of our, of our show and our lives. Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm nervous. I'm, like, actually kind of scared about this today, Trevor. I feel like we spent a couple of months now getting really good at something. Right, talking about music, I also had this fear. <laughs> yeah, and I'm worried that what we're going to learn is that our show sucks now. <laughs> yep, but I guess we'll see, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, here's what we're not going to talk about on this episode, Trevor. I have a little list. We are not going to be talking about the clips for 5-4-9-1-1, Rocket, Fire Coming Out of the Monkey's Head, Super Fast Jellyfish, Rhinestone Eyes, Hallelujah Money, We Got the Power, or Sleeping Powder. Right. To put it more simply, we are only going to be talking about the music videos for the officially released singles. Yes, exactly. And we will talk about those other clips in a future episode, so don't worry. I'm sure we'll get to it at some point, yeah, when we're really starving for content. Yeah, I mean, when we're really starving for content is when we do, like, our second album about Marky e. Smith's The Fall. But right. <laughs> I think we'll get to those other videos, you know, at some point in a reasonable future. Like, maybe in a future in which we have some kind of a, a digital implant that gives us glowy blue eyes, but not all the way into a future where, like, we're full robots. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. What did you think kind of going through all of these Gorillaz videos in order? Did you, did you, did you, letting it wash over you in that context? Did you take anything away from that? You know, I found I didn't really like a lot of them anymore. I'm just going to say it. A lot of them just haven't held up for me. Have gotten stale to you, huh? Yeah, a little bit. I think I, I think I, what I kind of focused in on was that I think there's a clear growth. I think that there is clear growth, even if the if the quality of the individual videos vacillates a bit. 
just in Jamie's sort of prowess as a director. Because it's worth mentioning that he kind of dove into the pool without a lot of experience. Yeah, I mean, he was a comic artist for the most part. Yes, exactly. And, you know, nobody he, moves in comics. And hey, you know what? A lot of people don't really move in gorillas music videos, it turns out. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, that seems like a pretty good segue to get right into the first one. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow comes today. Yes. Uh, this is directed by Jamie Hewlett and uh, it features graffiti art from Banksy. So, Dylan, before uh, before we decided to record this episode, you kind of issued a bit of a challenge to me, didn't you? Yes, I did. You said that um, we were going to uh, kind of structure this one around these uh, one-sentence summaries of music videos that you wanted us to come up with. Yeah, I figured we would split it up. You'd write half of them, I'd write half of them. You were going to do uh, the odds, I believe, the odd-numbered music videos, so like the first one, the third one, the fifth one, so on, and I was going to do the evens. Right. Uh, but, you know, uh, last <laughs> night when we were uh, kind of getting our notes together, it turns out you did the evens, and yeah, I, I got so leaving me to do the odds. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure that this wasn't an accident in your part. I'm pretty sure you sat down with the intention of doing the odds, watched Tomorrow Comes Today, and just went, nothing to say about this one. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just gonna go to, I'm just going to start doing the evens and pretend like it was some kind of mix-up. All right, you're accusing me of some Machiavellian behind-the-scenes meddling here, huh? Because I had some trouble coming up with something to say about the Tomorrow Comes Today video, but I mean, I I think I got there. Do you have a one-sentence summary for the Tomorrow Comes Today video? I do, I do. All right, here's how I would describe the Tomorrow Comes Today video in one sentence. Gorillas loiter around a city at night, completely paralyzed either by an overwhelming (laughs) sense of urban on way or a complete lack of a budget. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that does summarize it, doesn't it? I mean, you know, we we hear as much, and I believe in the film Bananas, he kind of explicitly states that he has like two weeks to to make a video and five dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah, five dollars. There's like no money. He did what he could. He did what I he gotta could. say though. I gotta say, to his credit, Two D's mouth definitely moves. His mouth, and sometimes his eyes even a little bit. Yeah, he, he definitely blinks a few times. The rest of the band <laughs> kind of content to just, like, chill around. Yeah, they're all rigor mortis. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and present the first of what will be a series of, of Best Dressed Awards. Okay. Something that I think that Jamie Hewlett is maybe under underrated as is a, is a stylist. I think uh, the wardrobes are sometimes the most enjoyable thing about these videos, so... What I'm going to do is just sort of single out which member of the band uh, in each video I believe deserves the best dressed award. I'll play this game too. Tomorrow comes today. Everybody's kind of wearing their typical phase one outfits Mm -hmm. here. Um, But I'm going to go ahead and give it to Noodle because she's got her little weird radio helmet, which uh, is is actually confirmed to be inspired by the character uh, Gum from the Dreamcast video game Jet Set Radio, uh, who wears sort of a similar weird radio slash headgear thing which gorillas fan at one point of their uh life following this band has not at one point wished for a cool noodle-esque radio helmet oh be sick right yeah uh i don't know this is surprisingly you know what this reminded me a lot is the phoner to arizona clip (laughs) i can definitely see that Uh, yeah i get this i get a similar vibe from that one it's a little cooler and moodier right i mean it is i like i like the signs of the monkeys i guess that's banksy right I like all the sped up footage of us, like, you know, zooming around the city, too. That's cool. That's cool stuff. Consider where we are technologically, that sleeping powder was made even faster and for less money. Yeah, we've definitely, we've, they've definitely grown in leaps and bounds in the uh, 17 years they've been making music. I'm, okay, I'm going to do this in a weird order, but I, I want to do, like, a best and worst moment of each video. Um, okay. So I think the best moment in this video is that long horizontal pan uh, where it where it sort of starts on one end of a street and like pans across the side and you sort of one by one see each band member. Like in that moment, they really do kind of feel real in the space. You know what I mean? That is a very good shot. Yeah, I know what you mean. But there's a little bit of a, of a weird uh, uh, Easter egg, which is that the last one to show up is, uh, is uh, Russell and he's showing off his little tattoo. On his arm, which is a kind of a... Right, the duck one. But you know, a lot of people online have pointed out that that tattoo bears a very strong uh, resemblance to an initiate tattoo of a white power prison gang called the Peckerwoods. Interesting. <laughs> so, so what are, do you think, A, do you think Russell has done time? And two, do you think that somehow he joined a white supremacist prison gang? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that uh, Red Bull saw this and were like, oh, he's signaling. Let's scoop these boys up for some promotions. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think the worst moment in this video, it clearly it clearly is the most expensive so thing wait, in this your, video. So your, your favorite moment in this video is Russell showing off his white power tattoo? <laughs> no, my favorite is the panning shot. I think okay. the panning shot is very nice. All right. Uh, the worst moment, I think, it's clearly the most expensive shot in the video, but when, when 2D rotates and is kind of pseudo 3D, I just think, like, why did you spend so much money on that and not <laughs> on making everybody else's eyes blink? <laughs> they like rotating these characters. It's something we'll see a lot. I know. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I got to say, though, if this had been the uh, first Girls music video I'd seen, I would think this band were, like, lame as shit. <laughs> like I would not have been impressed by this. I'd be like, "What? What is this? I get this is boring." Fortunately, though, the first Gorillaz music video I believe we both saw was Clint Eastwood. Oh shit! Directed by Jamie Hewlett and Pete Candelin, who will be the co-director of almost every Gorillaz video. By the way, this one was this one is properly cool, and I'm interested in hearing your one sentence summary about it. Okay, here it comes. One sentence summary. A blasé performance by the band in a white void is interrupted by a giant Del the Funky Homo sapien who raps and dances while the gang does battle among an army of apes. That's what happens in the Clint Eastwood video. It's I true. Gotta hand it to you there. You watched it. No problem. Uh, best dressed award, Trevor, goes to 2D's uh, T-Virus shirt. Which I is... want it so bad. If they sold this merch, I would buy like two of them. That's how bad I want one. It's still one of the most iconic gorillas outfits and it, and it should be a go-to if you're a 2d cosplayer i mean you gotta yes. make your own i've seen a couple i just i want one of these things so bad fucking sick dude yeah between this and like the pink rabbits a shoot ill shirt 2d served a looks in phase one yeah no doubt uh and you know that there's a censored version in this video that omits the dawn of the dead quote at the beginning for being like i don't know too spooky or something <laughs> i like the dawn of the dead quote there a lot it's just like a really cool little nice touch i love that um i love damon's vocalized intro too i almost sometimes wish that was on the album it's yeah, really do you think, cool do you think that that murdoch laugh is actually phil cornwell it doesn't sound that much like him personally i would doubt it i wonder who that is i couldn't i yeah. looked at all the credits but they didn't credit any of the vocal performances unfortunately maybe it's jamie I like to I like to accredit any kind of unknown vocal performance of Gorillaz thing to Jamie. It does kind of feel like it's in his register. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah, but no, this is a really cool video. I'm I love how it, it already already the awkwardness of the band members all having assigned instruments that are usually not in Gorillaz songs is on display. Like it starts with Noodle strumming a guitar, and you're like, nope, that's not on this song. <laughs> <laughs> gets even worse in the next one too but we'll talk about it <laughs> yeah for sure i think the 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 look of everybody is awesome i think the best part of this video for me is just like 2d's facial expressions he just looks so brainless like he just <laughs> looked like he does not grasp anything that's happening in front of him <laughs> it's nice that they were already going with uh with that character so early in the uh music videos too yeah absolutely but my best moment trevor is i think every second that dell is on screen is magical they do a really good job of animating him in this one he looks the dell character is really cool he's so fun to watch move i love when he does that little pose that involves his head sort of flying off of his shoulder and then his yeah. body like rising up to meet up with his head it's cool. I love when he's like stomping around and stuff. He'd make a he'd make a good final boss in a Gorillaz video game. He totally would. Uh, but you know what, Trevor? Already, my least favorite thing about Jamie Hewlett, music video director, is on display. All right, what's that? Sound effects. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I I don't need those here. No. I wish that I wish that he had more faith in himself as a, like a visual storyteller to just be like. They'll feel the impact of this based on me animating it well. I don't need yeah, to Yeah, we have... don't need to put ground cracking noises when uh Dell splits the earth open. The part that's like apes the thriller video when the when the uh zombie gorillas start to dance, like mm -hmm. why do we need to hear their shoulders moving and their hands yeah. clapping? Like that is a really good scene though. That little dance is so well animated and uh and it's a shame because I actually think of the sequence where Murdoch faces off against the gorillas is probably the weakest sequence in the video. Uh, it's just a little confusing. Like there's there's that moment when they're like the gorillas head like whips around to look at Murdoch, and then Murdoch looks at the gorilla, and they like replay it a couple of times, and then like yeah, it's very unclear what happens. He gets struck by lightning. He yes, gets struck by lightning. I understand, but then he, like it's not fully animated. They like they've run out of money. <laughs> he sort of it sort of freeze frames as he falls to the ground, and like I don't know that whole sequence like feels a little weird to me. It's all staged oddly. 
there are definitely some moments in this video where you realize that like, oh, maybe they didn't have as much money as they want us to think they did. Because, you know, there's a lot of looped animation. There's a lot of stuff that just plays forward and then gets rewound for a second and then plays forward <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's, you know, a way to fill space in the video without having to add new animation. But like, upon further viewings, it do, it's very noticeable. And again... The band just doesn't really move that much. No, uh, the, what what animation is there is beautiful and fluid and and terrific, you know. And it looks expensive. It looks like plenty of money had to be spent to make this thing for sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I do love the the moment with the with Noodle's big big kick at the end, and I and I also used to love playing that little rudimentary flash game that was based on that moment. Right. That was yeah. I remember that. I think it was very smart also for them to do a roll call at the end of the video. Yeah, that was that was a nice touch. I think really it was smart. good way of introducing you to these characters. Yeah, exactly. Probably my favorite video phase one. And in my top three videos altogether. Um I think I want to go with you on that. If any if anything gives it a run for its money, we're about to talk really? about it. Really? You're you're that big a fan of the nineteen two thousand video? I really do like this video, actually. This is definitely one of my favorites as well. Just comes comes really close to cracking the top three. And before we reviewed the videos for this episode, I probably would have told you it was among my very favorites. I probably would have called this my favorite gorillas video before revisiting them all this time. It's a lot of fun, it is. Do you want to hear my one-sentence summary for this one? Yeah, tell me about it. All right. Gorillas hit the road in a charming take on the classic band driving around in a cool car music video, which, thankfully, doesn't end in moose slaughter. <laughs> The best dressed award, in my opinion, goes to Russell. His gray hoodie is beautifully animated, but uh, a close second goes to that cop with the biker mustache who's wearing a red Speedo. Love that guy. But yeah, this is a really fun music video. It's just them getting in the geep and uh, driving around in some kind of like abandoned uh, Sonic the Hedgehog world. By the way, Trevor, as we're recording, it's, it's June 25th, and today marks the 16th anniversary of the 192000 single release. Nice. Yeah. The animation in general, I think, is really fluid and really pretty, and I there's some great little touches, like early on with Murdoch sort of flipping that toothpick around in his mouth. That's a, yeah. I love the little Japanese subtitles during Noodle's Refrain. That's a that fun is cool. touch. I really like that little monkey uh, that they do the brain and tail thing with. Oh, yeah, that's so Chuck Jones. That's so, like, yes. Looney Tunes Chuck Jones, yeah. you know? In fact, yeah, that probably is my, my best moment. Let me ask you something, though. What exactly is happening when Murdoch, like, gets excited about there being a church and then doesn't go on that exit? I don't know. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Like, was there an animatic version of this where he blows that church up and EMI was like, please don't make them blow a church up? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> it, it would maybe explain where that moose comes from. Sound effects-wise, this is the worst of all of them. Yeah. There's that awful, like, fart noise when the UFO blows up that gas station. Like, dude, just just play the song and, like, do your animation. Maybe, maybe you know, they felt like they needed to do that because it's a cartoon. They needed to add some, like, wacky cartoon sound effects. I guess so. But, man, I, I yeah, would much prefer a version of this with just, just the just the song audio. You know what I mean? Imagine if every music video had sound effects for every... Imagine if every <laughs> music video had, what is it, Foley? <laughs> what if in the Hotline Bling video, they just played the song really quietly and you just heard Drake's, like, breathing and footsteps as he danced around in that box? To be fair, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, videos on YouTube where people take music videos and they cut the music and just actually put in the sound effects <laughs> always fucking cracks me up like yeah that's there's just funny. something so funny about that to me and honestly i'd love to see a gorilla's version of that somebody <laughs> sure, why get not? on that but it's this middle ground that's frustrating to me i don't like it yeah you know yeah i think the worst moment to me is that is that giant moose feels very kind of 2001 era like so random invader zim humor to me i like the moose you're only yeah. saying that because Invader Zim actually, like, used a moose at one point. Did they? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. must be what I'm associating it with. I like the moose. I, I don't understand why Murdoch is so excited to, like, immediately excited to kill it, though. And I do love that last uh, shot of the band sort of, like, looking like Wile E. Coyote after a dynamite goes off in his face. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, let's talk about Rock the House. Rock the House. This is uh, your turn for a one-sentence summary. Okay, here it comes. Are you ready? Yeah. A blase performance by the band in a white void is interrupted by a giant Delta Buggy Homo sapien who raps and dances while the gang does battle among an army of apes. I gotta appreciate all the effort you put into this one so far. 
I mean, do I even need to say best dressed award goes to Murdoch Nichols for his athletic gear and padded bikini ensemble? I mean, it's it's unforgettable. Sure, I do. I do really <laughs> dig uh, 2D Spider-Man shirt though. I do like 2D Spider-Man shirt, and I do want to give a shout out to Noodle who wears the fuck out of that football helmet with a little suction cup arrow sticking out of it. Yes. And this begins with a with a little commercial for the Kong website, kind of, where they do like a little zoom through of, of Kong Studios, you know? They do a little shining kind of thing with Noodle uh, riding around on a little bike. I don't know. The worst thing about this video is that it's such a restatement of the Clint Eastwood video. Like, it, it kind of suffers from the comparison because I don't think it's quite as good. But it's still, there's a lot of fun stuff here, for sure. I mean, I think the best moment for me has got to be when Murdoch starts using his crotch to sort of bat away the flying pool balls and then, like, there aren't even any more coming at him, but he keeps thrusting anyway. <laughs> yeah. It seems like uh, between this and um, the Clint Eastwood video, the theme seems to be they battle um, Dell and his minions. Right. And only one of them is able to do a really good job, you know? Murdoch uh, got struck by lightning, I guess. Yeah. And Noodle's able to kick him, but here, you know, everybody kind of gets battered by these uh, projectiles that Dell fires at them, except for Murdoch, who's able to ward them off pretty well with his... Dick. There is an interesting reference in this video, though, Trevor. Um, Which one? I might have missed it. So the the outfit that Dell is wearing is the outfit of a, of a very it's a very obscure reference. There's a there's a really fucked up, crazy French New Wave superhero movie from the '60s called Mr. Freedom, and Mr. Freedom wears exactly what Dell is wearing. And by the way, there are some great clips from Mr. Freedom on YouTube. You should go watch them because that movie Maybe is I will. bonkers. Dell looks great in this video too. Like I honestly. I think this might be a better model than on uh, Clint Eastwood. I don't know. I that the the 2D animated ghost is just so much fun to watch in motion. Although there's some fun, like I like when he's doing his karate moves in this one. Yeah, you know. I will say that the inflatable gorilla cheerleaders make me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I love them. I love their little their little inflatable gorilla boobs. <laughs> Didn't need those. I like I like the one who crawls up to Murdoch and smiles because she's she's so impressed by his style. Right. Yeah. His his um his abilities. This is a this is a highlight Murdoch moment for me. I think he's a I think he's letting this freak flag fly, and I'm and I support it 100. percent This was their first real use of that side of Murdoch as well. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. The kind of the lecherous kind of, one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Other other than maybe tomorrow comes today. I think that that most of Phase One's videos are are pretty effective. Mm hmm. Totally. Yeah. This was a nice uh, opening volley right out the gate. But in phase two, we saw them move on to some even more uh, impressive stuff. So you, do you want to get into uh, the Feel Good Inc. video? Yeah, I believe that it's uh, your turn to give me a one-sentence summary, isn't it? Feel Good Incorporated. So for this one, I have uh, 2D yearns to escape from one obvious metaphor to another while Murdoch does his best to remind us that he's the band's resident sex symbol. <laughs> the best dressed award for Feel Good Inc., I gotta give it to True Goy from De La Soul because he is rocking that big fluffy parka. <laughs> Yeah, that makes him look like almost like a giant ghost. It's very cool. <laughs> Looked very cool. The big tracking shot at the beginning is it, like we've we've officially found a new Jamie Hewlett signature. He loves to start these videos with those big swooping tracking shots like we had at the beginning of Rock the House and now this. Yeah, that takes us into the tower. That is really cool. But I'll say right away, it, Hewlett has already taken a big leap forward just cinematography-wise. Like, Oh, yeah, this video looks incredible. Looks it looks like so they had twice good. the budget. It's so slick. There's so much cool stuff going on from angles and like yeah, camera Yeah, really movements. interesting framing. I love that one shot kind of like looking over Murdoch's shoulder at his bass guitar. Mm -hmm. and, and that interesting tracking shot when the camera is kind of following 2D as he sort of slowly slogs his way towards the window. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really love everything that goes on for like the first like 45 seconds of this video or so, like up to the chorus. You know, the whole set piece inside of the tower, 2D getting out of the chair. Uh, one of my favorite moments is where Murdoch stands up and then they hit a bright light behind him that like is uh, perfectly synced up to one of like the music stings. Just really cool stuff going on here in terms of editing and timing. Let me ask you something though. How how obnoxious would it be if you were asleep the morning after a huge tower orgy and some asshole started rapping into a megaphone? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, not not the best way to start a morning after a party. Yeah, it would really bum me out. But I mean, I get the impression that in Feel Good Inc. the party never ends. The only thing that, that that I don't like about this first part of the video, Trevor, is there's a little too much fading. There's a lot of kind of like fade out, fade in, and like every now and then 2D will kind of freeze and they'll fade into a different shot of him. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure that's a stylistic choice. 
Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it, it, it breaks the momentum to me. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but hey, at least there aren't really any sound effects. Like, there's one sound effect in this whole video. <laughs> right, there's the uh, windmill creaking noise, right? The windmill creaking noise, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think about the windmill? I think it's cool. I think it looks great, actually, yeah. I mean, everything in this video looks great. I actually think probably my favorite moment in the video is that huge tracking shot that, that kind of, like, swoops down towards Noodle playing the guitar on the windmill and then pulls That's off That's a very her. impressive one, yeah. I also like that, just the shot of the windmill coming out of the clouds before you can even see the island. Yeah, very beautiful. I, it, my worst moment is probably the, the 2D's kind of weird piecemeal dancing during the De La Soul verse. I kind of like the idea that his body is almost being manipulated by the song, but yeah, it just doesn't end up looking that great. It doesn't quite read as anything other than, like, uh, well... De La Soul is doing something we're not quite sure what to do while they're doing their thing. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's pretty effective. So many cool little touches. Like, I love I love how uh, 2D's fingers leave little smears in the condensation on the window. And, and I really like, um, before we even pan up to the tower, in the very first couple seconds, uh, they include a little clip of the Space Monkeys remix of uh, Clint Eastwood in there. Yeah, Fistful of Peanuts. You hear a little, you hear a little snippet. Very cool. Do you have anything else you want to say about this one? No, I just think it's a it's a it's a perfect example of that alchemy that that uh, they talked about in that first big phase four interview of, of Damon and Jamie just being so on the same page in the marriage of visual and, and sound. You know what I mean? It's an alchemic work. Is that a word? Alchemic. I like it. Or alchemical? I don't remember. I don't know. Anyway, it's dare. It's dare. Uh, I, it's my turn. I got a one sentence summary for you. Hit me with it. An adolescent noodle takes center stage in a joyous romp that celebrates three things no teenage girl can resist. Dancing, playing dress-up, and doughy, snaggletooth heroin addicts who haven't been relevant since before they were born. Uh, Sean Ryder. Bless him for showing up for this, though. Yeah, I guess so, right? But hey, what else is he doing? Let me quickly give out a Best Dressed Award to, uh... I don't think there's any mi- any mind blowing outfits in this one, but but once Noodle completes the look of the football helmet and the synthesizer, she does look pretty cool. I mean, to be fair though, cuddled up in bed, half drunk with Sean Ryder is a pretty good look though. So Murdoch gives <laughs> it's her not bad. Money. It's not bad. It wouldn't be an episode of Howl of the Monkeys if I didn't have a crackpot theory. Um, okay. I have a crackpot theory here. You know, you know how every now and then, as Sean Ryder singing, the the video will kind of like slow down or speed up or move into reverse. Yeah. I believe that that was a stylistic choice uh, that was thought of to cover up the fact that he was too fucked up to properly lip sync his very simple part. Possibly. <laughs> That's my theory. Although, the, you know, this isn't the first time they've done the uh, loop back, play it forward, loop back thing again. That's true. That's this true. This might have been a little more out of necessity. Oh, boy. It's like four words, dude. Yeah, he can't do it. He, although, you know what? He had his he had his moment of, of triumph at Demon he had, Yeah, he redeemed himself recently. First of all, Noodle's uh, uh, room decorating is on point. I love her. I love her room. Anytime we're in Kong Studios, there's so much cool stuff to look at. I love that she has that little circle with the fist in it on her wall because that was a, a patch on her jacket back in the, in the Clint Eastwood video. So it's like a cool... Another thing I would probably buy some merch with, yeah. I believe they put it on some buttons for the uh, D-Sides Deluxe Edition, right? Oh, yeah, I think you're right. And and it's always good to see a rare appearance from uh, Mike the Monkey, official gorilla's pet, Mike the Monkey. Right, yeah, he's, he's hopping around in this one. But uh, this one kind of starts a trend that um, I'm not a huge fan of, where we only get token appearances from the other band members. You know, this is like a center stage noodle moment, and, and mm-hmm. they just find little glimpses of, of the other the other band, all of which I think are relatively memorable. But yeah, I agree. I, I prefer it when everybody has something to do, for sure. I think the best moment is, I love in the first verse, when they're kind of, uh, they keep freeze-framing noodle and like, adding another one in the background so there's sort of a very cool noodles. effect yeah that's very probably my cool. favorite thing they do in this video and noodles dance uh choreography is all animated very well too and just the color palette in this one i like a lot it's got kind of like a lot of deep colors that i feel like are very appropriate for the demon days era yeah it's like the it's the closest you can get to kind of like neoprene nightclub but still nodding to the to the demon days palette you know what i mean yeah yeah let's talk about the ending of this video though so there's this kind of a, it's all a dream double twist thing that happened. Right, Sean Ryder dreaming that you know, some teenage girl has decapitated him and is preserving his head in uh, some kind of 
technological state for him to, you know, sing these same four words over and over again. Right, which turned out to be a dream within a dream because Murdoch was also having a dream. That reads as kind of a cheap gay joke to me. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. That doesn't hold up so well to me, does it? What did you think about that? Like, it seemed like, if anything, why would Murdoch be that? I'm sure Murdoch has fucked Sean Ryder before. How did that not happen, right? I mean, I don't see it really as a gay joke so much as just a being in bed with Sean Ryder joke. I feel like there's no way those two dudes didn't fuck at some point, right? They're, yeah. They're both moralist bacchanalian weirdos. <laughs> Well, I mean, that brings us straight back to the Jamie and conversation, which we don't really need to have at this point. I'm sure we'll do an episode about that kind of stuff down the road. That's true. Uh, did you know that originally the the Jolly Roger flag that's on Murdoch's wall when he wakes up at the end and is in Winnebago was a Confederate flag and that they were made to change it? Good. I know, yeah. But, you know, I mean, Murdoch did once dress up as a Nazi, so his taste is questionable, I suppose. So so you're telling me that this is the second overt white power uh, reference we've gotten in <laughs> Gorilla's uh, Videography. A theme is emerging. Hail gorillas. <laughs> Hail gorillas. Let's talk about Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry, want to hear what I uh, wrote up for this one? Yeah, tell me. The gorillas in Booty Brown party with some kids in the desert to prove that you can have a good time even while fighting the war on terror. <laughs> when I mistakenly thought that this was mine, I think I wrote uh, something like, 2D has kidnapped a dozen children at gunpoint and flown them into the desert to force them to watch him dance shirtless. This is probably, I'm thinking about it, this might be my least favorite Gorillaz video. I think it's not as ambitious as some of the other ones, but I actually don't think that there's any moments that feel that fall flat for me in this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's consistent enough. I like all the kids. The kids are the kids are good. I really I like the kids uh, Jamie came up with for the live visuals a little more. Everybody's outfits are really on point, but I'm gonna best dressed award goes to Russell uh, because he's got the Fu Manchu and the Fez. That one shot they uh, included him in here, yeah. Which is a, it's a, it, but I mean one shot or no, that's a great look. That's a great look. Sure, I can't I can't argue with that. Special shout out though to 2D because he wrote I heart Yoko on his army helmet and that's great. The army helmet is cool. I love uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not the exact same thing from the Dirty Harry album art, but you know, it's cool. But the idea here right is that he his helicopter is crashed uh, in the desert, right? And for some reason he had all those kids with him and he fires off a flare and the kids are all like worried because they're stuck in the desert and so he decides to entertain them with a little song and dance. Is that what's going on here? I'm pretty sure, yeah. He's got a keyboard that comes up just from the desert. I do actually like the mix of a, of a, a real world shoot and 2D animation. I think that that's a cool look. And I wish that they'd do something like that again. Yeah, especially because Booty Brown just does such a great job here, I think. Do you think that some of that sand is still in Booty Brown's hair? <laughs> it's possible, because um, I, I believe I remember reading that he uh, did that take of him coming out of the desert, like, 30 times or something. Jeez, that is, yeah. that's intense, it man. Apparently it took them a long time to get that shot, but uh, to his credit, he did it every time, no complaints. At least and that's he does what a I great heard. job. He does a great job. Yeah. Like, standing up on the convoy, and I love yep. that. I love the one little kid who sort of dances during his verse. That's a fun touch. Right, yeah. I think the best the best moment in this video, Trevor, is that at one point these meerkats kind of pop up, or whatever their desert equivalent is. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. what animal they are. And behind them, there's this a road sign that just has an exclamation mark, and the word sand on it <laughs> that's such a good touch that's so hewlett that's so hewlett you gotta love jamie hewlett's signage is is so great there's a couple of instances of dancing animals uh in this one for me that almost just feels kind of thrown in at the last minute because they're like we got to do something else right well there's a dung beetle maybe that's the worst moment there's a there's a cgi dung beetle that looks kind of lame yeah i do like the dancing lizard though i do enjoy yeah. him yeah, just not really one of my favorite entries into the Gorillaz Music Video catalog. I don't know. I think it's solid. I, I do like it. It doesn't aim very high, but I feel like yeah. it, I feel like it hits its target. I do like it. Right. Not a super huge fan of this next one either. Uh, El Manana. Yeah, I got a one sentence summary for you. All right, let me hear it. Maybe it'll change the entire way I think about this video. Okay, here it comes. Noodle's peaceful ride on Windmill Island, a symbol which represents youth, innocence, and the natural world, is cut short when she is attacked by two RAH-66 Comanche helicopters, symbols which represent industry, warmongering, and the synthetic world, making for a decidedly theatrical gorillas video, a symbol of Jamie Hewlett taking himself way too fucking seriously. That was a long sentence, dude. <laughs> yes, it was. I don't like this video at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't, yeah, it did not change the way how I feel about this video. Just, yeah, like, I remember being really unimpressed with it when it came out. A real kind of like, oh, is that... 
what we're getting now kind of feeling i mean there's no sound effects like thank god there's no sound effects because it would have made it even worse <laughs> but we're starting to see jamie i think jamie's other major weakness as a as a video director here which is sometimes jamie doesn't seem to give a shit about what song he's making a video for right. he just wants to make a short film about gorillas yeah i feel like that these the video and song feel so disconnected here this is not the worst example of that for me, I think it is the worst example, kind of. Oh, I think that I think that they're. they're I know the worst one you're example. not going to like, but I mean, we'll talk about that when the time comes. Look, obviously, everything here is of, of extremely high artistic quality. Like the animation is very beautiful, and the staging is very like effective. That's honestly like that. Honestly, makes me dislike it even more because I mean, if you're going to spend like the most money you've got like on a video, like then we get this. That's such a disappointment. The continuity with Feel Good Inc. feels weird and last minute, and the emotional stakes don't feel earned to me at all. Yeah, not at all. I mean, maybe if you wanted to tell a story over four videos, this one would have been good to come second. I guess. And I'm glad they didn't do that. I guess I, I have to hand out a Best Dressed Award. Noodle's the only character who has an outfit in this video, and I mean, it's fine. Everybody looks good in stripes. Her outfit looks a lot, Trevor, like what uh, Graham Coxon and his daughter were wearing that one time that I saw them walking to school together in Camden Town back in 2006. I wonder if they were also wearing that when they were blown up on a floating island with a windmill by helicopters. <laughs> Could have been, I don't know. Do you think there's any kind of parallel there between uh, Blur losing their guitarist and Damon having this other video where uh, the, his fictional band's guitarist gets blown up. I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a, a, a good point. That's something Maybe I didn't Maybe some unresolved consider. stuff going on there. Maybe Jamie wanted to do like a classic video of the band performing and Damon was like, no, we need to kill the guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst moment in this video for me, Trevor, is when the, the very last shot, when the bomb doors open and those bombs fall out and like it fades to black like that. That's the video in miniature to me. I, Yeah. It's so overblown, and it does not fit what's happening in the song at all. And, like, it's just this forced cliffhanger that... And I know, I know that there are a lot of Gorillaz fans who love this video. Really? Yeah, there are, for sure. This, I gotta say, I'm so unapologetic to you. I think that this is garbage. I don't yeah. think that this video is good at all. I think it's, like, a, just, a, just a total misconception of the project and Jamie's place in it to be, like, Let's tell a really, like, emotional story about Noodle for no reason, <laughs> with no setup. You know what kind of Gorillaz videos I like, too? I like ones where gorillas are in it. Yeah, that'd be awesome, right? That'd be great to have a gorillas video with some gorillas in it. Not the animal. Not the animal, because we've gotten that already. It was, it was cool. Like, I almost would have preferred it if we'd had, like, a if we'd had like a cutaway to 2D singing and, like, a single tear rolling down his cheek. Like, if you... <laughs> If you gotta fucking go all the way in, like, then, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, this next one, though, one of my absolute favorites. Oh, this is, here, Stylo. Comes, here comes my favorite Gorillaz video, Stylo. Same, dude. Same. I forgot yes. to say, but uh, Feel Good Inc. probably would have rounded out my top three. This is number one, though. I oh, dope. love this. I love this. And it was even better returning to it, okay? So here's my one sentence summary. Ready? Yeah, let's hear about it. Murdoch and 2D flee the scene of a crime in a badass car and accidentally find themselves stuck in a remake of the first Mad Max movie starring Bruce Willis. <laughs> awesome. Uh, by the way, Bruce Willis's official credit when this uh, video is issued with credits is Bruce Willis as himself. Right, yeah, because it clearly is supposed to be Bruce Willis, because when he Dude. Uh, starts chasing them, you see 2D clearly mouth to Murdoch. It's Bruce. I think of the best moment in this video, and I'm and maybe maybe some people will disagree with me, but there's this thing about when you do stunt casting, which is which is totally what this is, right? You take a big <laughs> yeah. celebrity and you give them a role in a thing because they're a big celebrity. You're supposed to give them an extra masturbatory establishing shot. Yeah. This is the most masturbatory establishing shot in the history of stunt casting. You mean when he <laughs> mugs at the camera for a full 30 seconds? Twice. Once with sunglasses <laughs> and once without. Like, that's so good. It's my favorite part of this video. It's <laughs> great. I love when he's shooting at them out the window and he just starts laughing. Definitely not a phoned-in performance at all. So good. And I, Okay, so the Best Dressed Award goes to 2D because I love his little creepy clown mask, but you got to give it to Cyborg Noodle for wearing that communist beret. That's badass. I even like Murdoch's little just uh, minimalist thing with like a little gray shirt and that like red bandana. Everything works about this for me. I you know what I even really like the the CG models I think they're they're awesome like yeah. 
they look great here. They look really good here. This is the best CGI gorillas have ever looked. I'm not saying get rid of 2D animation. I'm glad we have both, and I'm glad we go back to 2D animation after this too, but but this is the introduction of sort of ghoulishly green Murdoch, which yes. is great. I love, first of all, I love your read on this video that you brought up back in the Plastic Beach episode, Trevor. Oh, um, yeah, okay, so this is um, gorillas escaping from some kind of caper they've pulled. Yes. Where they've stolen Damon Auburn's demos. I think that's where 2D's clown mask comes into this, too. Because <laughs> yeah. I would just love to see a little short film of them, like, you know, pulling up to, what's Damon's studio? Studio 13 studio or something? Studio 13, yeah. Just pulling up, Murdoch slapping this clown mask on 2D and just going to go in there, get the demos, <laughs> right. get out. And probably it went fucking terribly wrong because yeah. the second a cop car shows up, Cyborg Doodle just starts emptying a shotgun at him. So good. <laughs> if you like, if you write Gorilla's fan fiction, please just write a little quick scene about how Gorilla's ended up stealing Damon Albarn's demos. I would just love to read something yeah, like that. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. Like, I love the look on 2D's face after that cop car flies through the billboard where he looks yes. at it. Yes. And then back at Murdoch, like, well, things have certainly gotten out of hand, haven't they? <laughs> it's so good. There's so much, like, so much of, this is, like, where the characters really shine through, like, Love they it. never have before, I think. Like, I like the whole, like, more constructed music video ones we've gotten, but, like, here where it's really just kind of almost character work driven, just really good. If I have to pick a worst moment in this video, I guess the gag with the fat cop cross Crawling to grab the donuts is a little lazy. Oh, I hate that. And the uh, the boogeyman costume looks terrible. Yeah, it looks kind of silly. How much do you think they paid Bruce Willis for this? I don't know. I think I remember hearing. I think I remember hearing maybe from a Gorillas unofficial Jamie Hewlett interview that he might have done it for free. That would have been pretty cool. I hope so. I also like thinking that they did the entire Plastic Beach tour just to raise the money to pay Bruce Willis. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. One or the other. Love it. Love it. Love it. You know what I don't so much love? <laughs> the fact that the other two videos from this phase are just nowhere near as good. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about On Melancholy Hill. It's my turn to do a one button summary. All right, let me hear it. Real Noodle shoots at a bad guy. Then a drawn-out sequence happens involving celebrities riding in submarines. Then Cyborg Noodle shoots at a bad guy. You forgot the part where she uh, throws up an octopus. That, to me, is the single worst moment in Jamie Hewlett's music video directing career, in as far as visuals not matching the song. The octopus? Or the whole video? No, that moment. The octopus. Like, yeah. like nothing in the song is happening that would at all set up that visual. <laughs> like No, no. At, at all. And the problem here, this is why this is my, fa my least favorite Gorillaz video, Trevor, is that... On Melancholy Hill is the third most iconic Gorilla song, and I wish that it had a video that respected that the way that, you know, that Feel Good Inc. video and those, that Clint Eastwood video are perfect for this song. Yeah, I mean, there's no way they could have known, and I guess they were really banking on Stylo being that, you know what I mean? Because that is like a Gorilla's music video. That stands up there with the like iconic ones, I think. That might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion. Because I don't see a lot of people talk about the Stylo music video, but I think that's one of their all-time greats. We gotta get off Stylo, though. We're talking about On oh, Melancholy Hill. On Melancholy Hill. We're talking about On Melancholy Hill. I think it's a, I think it's a decent short film, a decent gorilla short film. I just think it's a terrible gorilla's music video. I kind of, you know, there's that juxtaposition of like a kind of melancholy love song put together with some kind of action thing. That's what they did with uh, El Manana. I almost think it works a little bit more here. Because I like On Melancholy Hill as like a soundtrack to just like shooting up bad guys and stuff. I think the kind of I think that, that moment works. at the beginning of the video works when she shoots at the yeah. the guy in the plane. But that but after that, yeah. it's just kind of you know. First of all, this is like a weird connective tissue chapter in a book that doesn't even have an ending. Mm -hmm. So like almost nothing of consequence happens in this this video. Like what happens no. in this video is they move from point A to point B. They get to Plastic Beach and Noodle hooks up with uh, Russell. The best moment in this video is I like the weird shot of Sun, Moon, and Stars giving a central rub down to the manatee. What is going on there? I don't know, but I like that moment because it's weird. The worst moment to me, though, is just that last shot lands like a dead fish to me of... Yeah. Of Plastic Beach coming out of the fog. Like, by this point, we'd all seen so many images of that island. It just didn't feel like anything. It just reinforced the fact that nothing happened in this video. 
Yeah, I really, uh, to be fair though, I really do enjoy seeing all the, um, say, seeing Jamie's depictions of all the collaborators. I think there's some cool stuff going on there. For sure. I mean, and, and, and let me say, I like when, when Cyborg Noodle spits up the octopus on, on mute. And similarly, I also like when Paul Simonin puts spinach into Mick Jones's yeah. pipe and he goes all Popeye. Like, That's really good. But, but again, that just doesn't have anything to do with what's happening in the song. You know what no. I mean? Yeah. I also like this uh, video a lot for uh, the little bit of 2D we get. I mean, just this has got to be like the low point in his career in Gorillas, right? Trapped in this summer and just watching this horrible recreation of one of his friends who he now believes is dead just vomit up an octopus. He's got to be like, <laughs> just end it now for me. <laughs> I wish I was back yeah. in the belly of, uh, of a whale. Obviously, again, from a technical standpoint, everything's good. Did I give out a Best Dress Award? Because obviously... Real Noodle's uh, whole ensemble is so iconic. The, the, it's cool, yeah. It's very, very spy-esque. Exactly. The minimalist cat mask and the sort of the nurse's uh, jacket and the and the leggings. Like, that's yeah. a great look. That's a great yeah. look. Definitely. But I don't know. This does, This just isn't a music video to me. And, and I mean, obviously, this would be the phase where this starts happening because Damon and Jamie are starting to slip off the page. They're not on the same page anymore. Yeah, this is where, you know, you start to get the feeling like it's a little bit Bit of, a little bit of trouble in paradise. But let's talk about the next video, Donkomatic. All right, so, you know, we've been doing these little one-sentence summaries that kind of uh, <laughs> uh-huh. sum up the uh, what goes on in the music video, but here I thought I'd forgo that because, you know, not a lot happens in this one and just come up with uh, a sentence that I feel like a lot of people probably thought when uh, they first watched <laughs> this for the first time. Uh-huh. So that uh, sentence is actually a question. It's, uh, who the fuck is this guy and where are the fucking gorillas? <laughs> Okay, so a little bit of trivia. This is the first video to not feature Pete Candelan as the co-director. Okay. And he will never co-direct a Gorillaz video again. That's it. Huh. Attached at the hip to Jamie Hewlett up until now, and he is done now. I don't know what happened. Maybe he also wasn't a big fan of the direction they were taking the project. I don't know. I don't know. I know that he's still very active at Passion Pictures, which is the... The studio responsible for every Gorillaz video, of which I believe Jamie Hewlett is at least a stake owner. And maybe he was like, you know, I've really been enjoying making these uh, music videos for this cartoon band, but in the last one, you made uh, one of them throw up an octopus apropos of nothing, and uh, in this one, you're just kind of bringing in this dude with a, a bad haircut and some douchey facial hair. And, <laughs> yep. You know, I'm out. I'm out, guys. Okay. I really like the cabin of Daily Submarine. I like how tactile it is. I like the lights in it. Uh, in fact, the best moment of this video is that establishing shot where where he's mostly in the dark and you just have like that flashing red light and the little white one and you just sort of see him in silhouette. Like that's a mm-hmm. really cool looking shot. And I don't even so much mind the the B roll of uh, of all the underwater sea creatures or whatever. Right. But I think that this video. I wish that somebody had dressed daily. <laughs> I wish that daily looked one hundred percent different than he does. Like, okay, I didn't like Don Comatic when it came out, and uh-huh. re-listening to it for our, I believe it was the Rarities episode, I was like, why didn't I like this? What problem did I have with Daily? It's Looking the at the music video, the video, my problem was that he's the biggest fucking tool on the planet. It's the video. I think Jamie did what he could. You know, he talks about making this video uh, in one of those Gorillaz Unofficial uh, interviews, and... What happened was he got called off the tour. He was on tour with the band during the Plastic Beach tour, uh, and the label called him back to his studio to make this video, like at the eleventh hour. Huh? And he had to he had to scrape something together. And I think he did a really lovely job. He he thought, okay, what can I do with with very little time and very little money? And he, he came up with a again. I think the the, the direction is really beautiful. I think it, it shows growth. Jamie, just as a visual stylist, but but the problem here is like I have to give out a best dressed award, and I'm going to give it to Two D for his skull and crossbones captain's hat and his little red yeah, pinstripe shirt. Because you're definitely not going to give it to Daly. Yeah, it's not a great outfit, but I can't give it to Daly. Daly's like fucking. He's got a he's got black construction paper glasses. He's he's wearing a dirty blue button up shirt. I mean, no. And the facial hair. The facial That's a bummer. hair. Like, That's a bummer. I'm fine with people dressing however they want to dress. I'm fine with people of unconventional styles. Just do not like the way this dude looks in the video. And what about that moment when, when like danger strikes and there's like some sparks fly and the and the ships bring uh, the leak? And he's supposed to he's supposed to sell that moment, Trevor, with a little bit of 
panic, right? Yeah. But instead, he's got this, like, dumb, goofy grin. Like, he's like, I can't believe I made a real music video. Like, he can't even sell it. I hate it. But you know what? It's not Jamie's fault. Jamie did it. Certainly not. Gave it a good college try with what he had, I think. Yeah, certainly not. If Jamie is to blame for any missteps in the girls' music video catalog, I don't think this one is his fault at all. No, no. And the little tiny bit of animation we get, which is 2D singing Talk to Me, Talk to Me, is really fluid and really cool looking. Eh, I don't think it's any more interesting than, like, uh, Tomorrow Comes Today, to be honest. I like it. I like how it's framed. I like that little bit of animation. I know we had no time to make it happen, but I like it. Let's wash our hands of that that video, right. Trevor. Let's talk about let's talk about do you think? Do you think? Because this again, I think this is probably one of my other favorites. I like this one a lot. Here comes a one sentence summary, okay? Alright. Tootie's life has spiraled out of control. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. That that about sums it up. You know what I like about this video the most, Trevor, is that it almost feels like Jamie's version of what Damon does when he writes lyrics. Like it's very impressionistic and like i can't account for what all is happening in this like i don't exactly understand everything that's happening in this video but it all kind of works in a in like a tone and in setting a mood you know what i mean Mm -hmm. okay so i was watching this video getting ready for this episode on the tv through my chromecast app and uh and shelly had never seen this video before my wife shelly had never seen this video before and she was watching it with me and halfway through the video she just goes Nobody's taking care of 2D. I mean, they're not, yeah. <laughs> she felt so sorry for him. Protect <laughs> she... him. 2D Defense Squad. You know what my favorite moment of this video is, Trevor? Which one? It's the look on 2D's face after Murdoch hits him with the shoe. Yeah? When he when he looks down at the piece of toast with the human ear on it, and he just looks so defeated. That's a dark moment. He just looks so defeated. Like, a lot of the time, like, the 2D Murdoch relationship is played for laughs, but here, there's actually, like, they wring some pathos out of it, you It's know? so ugly. It's so ugly. Yeah. Especially because you got that shot of him reading the funnies, which is probably my favorite uh, part of the music video. Yeah. Where he, he sees a little gorilla's comic strip, <laughs> and it's Murdoch walking into the kitchen going, hey, 2D, I love you. It's so good to have friends. Yes. And then Murdoch is in the kitchen, and you think almost like, oh, look, it's going to be the comic strip. But no, then he just like... Fucking hits him in the head with a Converse shoe. And, yeah. and again, that's a moment where I can't exactly explain what's happening in that moment. Right. Murdoch looks like he's angry at 2D about something, but then it seems like it's just a random act of violence. Why is there a cartoon of them getting along in the newspaper? Like, everything about that is so weird. But it works. Everything about this music video is weird. I, I really love it as, like, um almost like a shrug off of all the uh, unfinished business from Phase 3 as well. Like, one of my other favorite parts is him just walking into uh, the living room, and uh, the boogeyman is just there reading a paper, and they're like, hey, what's up? Like, it's so good. I think he's watching the Dare video on the TV, too, which is cool. Yes, I did. Yeah, I remember them sneaking out of there, too. Let me give out a Best Dressed Award. Okay. Because Andre 3000 is, is sporting a bold look. He's got a black mask with a white X on it. Yep. He has a black gaucho hat with a purple band on it. He's, yeah. he's shirtless. He's wearing two necklaces. He has a studded belt and tight jeans, and he's wearing white hospital bracelets. What a great look. And to complete the look, he's got two little minions carrying around buckets to catch his sweat in it. Because you know what? He's the shit. Because he's the shit. I love it. I love it. I love when he's in the cabinets and his fingers get smushed in the cabinet doors. I love all the weird little references to past Gorillaz videos. If you can actually go look at like uh, some webpage, I can't remember where it is. If somebody's kind of indexed all of the shout-outs to past Gorillaz things, all the little references, you know? There are a bunch. Anytime Jamie Hewlett draws a messy room, you know it's going to be full of references. Yeah, that's one of his strengths, I think, too, cluttering an area with as many little details and easter eggs as possible i believe it was actually in a reddit ama somebody asked like is murdoch still being terrible to you is he still torturing you or hitting you and the the canon answer is that ever since murdoch started going to see a dominatrix he's been much nicer to the people around him (laughs) i love that that makes sense to me that's really good yep totally some other nice moments in this video are are, uh 2d kind of checking in on noodle sleeping in her bed that's nice. That's yeah. sweet. That's a sweet yeah. moment. What do you make of that that ending where where they're getting evicted? Like, I love that. I, I think it's such a nice little cute little funny punctuation mark at the end. It almost seems like there's a there's a momentary feeling of relief where Tootie's like, <laughs> "Oh, good, finally I can just get out of this horrible situation that I'm in." 
That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And then they've got the windmill uh, tied up at the uh, end. That's a really cool touch. Yeah, like, that's This almost too. seems like the end of Gorillas. Like, you know, if they're unsure of if they're going to do any more stuff, let's have a nice little fun send off that the fans are going to like at least. You know what I remember, Trevor? <laughs> what I remember is that when the when the book of series came out on Instagram where they did like, you know, the book of 2D, the book of yeah. Murdoch, I there were so many fans who were like going crazy going, "This means that they're retconning do you thing. Do you thing isn't canon anymore." And I remember hearing that and thinking like, "Ret does anything happen in that video? <laughs> what are they retconning?" <laughs> The fact that they all lived together in a house at one point. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. But that's yeah. fine. I don't care. I don't need this to be yeah. canon. It's still it's still a great, effective piece of, of Gorillaz Media. Here's, totally. here's the actual worst thing about this video, though, is there has never been less respect for the song in a Gorillaz video than there is in this video. Like, they keep treating it like it's playing in the background whenever they move to different rooms. At one point, it fades all the way out. To sell the moment of Murdoch's room being a black void. That is a great moment, though. It is a great moment. But, like, holy shit. Like, apparently, Jamie could not give less of a shit about what Damon was doing at this point. Because he really treats that song like set dressing. Yeah, but whatever. You know what the song sounds like. Yeah, whatever. And plus, you should be listening to the 13-minute version anyway, so... Yeah, definitely. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine what they would have pulled out if they had the budget for that. <laughs> that would have been crazy. If it had been the end, I think it would have been a lovely... Uh, uh... Little wrap-up, yeah. Little bow on things. But uh, it's not. No, we have uh, another more recent music video to talk about. The which I didn't know we'd actually be discussing for some reason, because uh, we have talked about it on the show at length. But we, yeah, uh, we, don't have a, together... we don't have a one-sentence summary for this one, because you didn't know you had to write one. So let's just say... Uh... If, I, if I had to throw out a one-sentence summary, it would be like, uh, the gang's back at it, or like, here we go again, <laughs> something like that. Cause that's... Here we go again, I like it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, listen, this is bar none the best dressed gorillas video, so this was a very hard award to choose from. Noodle, for sure. Noodle. Russell has his It's Not Rail shirt. Noodle. Noodle has her fucking amazing two-tone glasses, but I gotta hand and it. And the sweater? That's my, this is my favorite noodle. I gotta hand it, though, to 2D and his insane pants situation <laughs> with his waistband hiked up, like, to his nipples and the pink golf socks. Like, that is a look, man. That is a bold look. To be fair, though, so is floating around naked in a void. That's true. That was also, that's also, a. I don't know if you call that a best dress, but it's also an iconic look. Least dressed, at least. <laughs> this video makes me so happy, man. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. I think we're both big fans of it. It was, it's a really nice way to usher in phase four and uh, kind of put the unpleasantness of all the weird half-baked story-driven stuff behind us. You know, it's a real return to form, like a kind of like going back to a bare bones approach to kind of really get something done. And I think they accomplished that perfectly here. Yeah. And apparently the budget on this was 600 grand. And, and you know, so much of that would have gone into making 3D models of the house so that they could do a 360 version. And that's kind of a shame because that's just like not how I consume this video. You yeah. Know? I would have liked to see what they would have uh, put that money towards otherwise. I agree. Uh, but that being said, I love that everybody has something to do that all of the choices that are made about what the band members do in the spirit house feel right. You know, they feel in yep. character. Uh -huh. I guess the worst moment has to be the monster that terrorizes Russell, I think is the weakest of the CGI monsters. But, uh, the best moment is when, Mur when Murdoch strikes that Jesus Christ pose in the hologram bridge. Yes. And, and the, the asteroid field behind him starts to turn all day glow and neon. Fucking so good. So good. Definitely. And look, ideally, at this point in the episode, we'd tell you about the strobe light video, but it's not out yet. It's not out yet. I mean, uh, we keep we keep getting leaks from it, right? Uh, I think I saw an image this week of uh, the band kind of hanging out in a club setting. Yeah, and that would have been the first we've seen of Noodle's uh, mocap model. Right. Yes. And I guess uh, if you're if you're a Gorillaz fan and a furry, you must be very excited about that <laughs> <laughs> because she's wearing kind of a leopard situation. She has a leopard situation happening. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how that video ends up going down. We haven't, we still haven't seen Russell yet, though. You think he's going to be in the video? Maybe he'll be DJing. I'd like to see him DJing. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll have that video to talk about soon. Uh, uh, until then, though, I, I want to say you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. I joined something called uh, uh, Amoeba or Amino. Amino. I joined something called Amino. I don't understand what it is, but we're on it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so if we figure that out, maybe they can find us there too. And then uh, join our Discord, uh, discord.me slash monkeys with a Z. Yeah, we always love popping in there, seeing what you guys are talking about. Yeah, we have a cool crew in there, and we'd love to see it grow. But even if it doesn't, y'all in, in the Howl You Monkeys Discord, we fucks with you. We fucks with you. D- okay, so I want to try it again, because I have All another right. potential sign-off. Okay. <laughs> so, same rules as last time, okay? All right, three strikes and you're out, though, I think. I, I understand. This is, this is okay. my second at bat. You say, you say accepted or no. All right, I'm strapped in. My name is Dylan Flynn. My name is Trevor Ickrath. We'll be back in a week, but until then, I keep my peace at arm's reach. Bad. <laughs> see, see you guys next week. <laughs> see you next week. Breakfast. Oh, yeah. I got a real appetite. Just a peppermint tea for me. 